the young man, who happened to also be a, an avid golfer, had a few hours to spare one afternoon. So I figured if he hurried and played fast, he could get in nine holes before having to go home. But just about he was time for him to tee off, and an older gentleman came up and asked if he could play with him because he was also golfing alone. To his surprise, the, the old gent played fairly quickly. He didn't hit it very far, but he hit it straight and he kept moving. And so they made pretty good time on their round, but they got to the ninth hole, and uh, this young man had a problem shot. His, his ball was behind a big old pine tree, and behind the pine tree was the green where he was trying to hit the ball. After several minutes of trying to figure out what he was going to do, the old man said, you know, when I was your age, I'd just hit that ball right over that tree. And so with the challenge set before him, he, he got the right club and he, he swung it hard and, and solid and uh, hit the tree right in the center and it plopped down about a about a foot away from where it started. And the old man said, well, of course, when I was your age, that pine tree was only three foot tall. <laughs> there, are, there are moments when golf can be one of the most, uh, you know, uh, exhilarating sport in the world. And then two minutes later, the most frustrating You know, golf is a sport where the, the golfer usually knows what to do, but they can't always do it. The golfer sometimes has trouble putting into practice what he or she already knows. The Christian life is a little bit like this. The Christian pretty much knows what to do, but sometimes just doesn't do it. The book of James, he, he helps and encourages us to, to put into practice what we know to do, what we've read in the scripture, what we've heard from the word. In this passage that we have today, he, he gives us about three exhortations to do what we know to do. James answers that question, how how do I practice what I should do? What I've heard from the word. The first exhortation, I don't know what happened to that word. Uh, the first exhortation is that uh, we are to acknowledge God's perfection. He says every good and perfect gift comes from above, coming down from the Father, the Father of heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth that we may be kind of the first fruits of all creation. James lists for us some of God's perfections. Every good thing that is given, every perfect gift comes from the Father which demonstrates his perfection. The blessings of life, such as family and food and friends and health and material blessings are all evidences of God's goodness and grace. As we acknowledge God's perfection, our hearts should be overflowing with thanksgiving to him for all the blessings we receive from his hand. Our Heavenly Father exists in such perfection that there is no variation in him, no shifting shadows. What a stark contrast between creature and creator. As, as further evidence of God's perfection, James speaks of God's will 
in bringing us to salvation and bringing us closer to God as further evidence of God's perfection James speaks of of all this and this it, it evokes in us this desire to to put into practice what we know what we've heard from the word a second exhortation that's the right word yet uh, is that we ought to be thinking of others first I remember not everything but uh, from a vacation Bible school song from many years ago I can't even remember where it was but the uh, the song was about joy and the the title was J O Y and each letter had a period after each signifying that each word st stood for another each letter stood for a word so it was Jesus others yourself that if we put these in that order, we would be on the road to joy. These priorities in life would help us to find that joy. J-O-Y. James instructs us to place others before ourselves in order to put into practice that which we know. We are to be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to, slow to anger. When we practice these characteristics, we, we generally put others before ourselves and show them the kindness and the, the respect of Christ. And that allows us to experience the joy God wants us to experience. The hard part, of course, is being consistent in our conduct James reminds us that our our anger and our hate does not accomplish the righteousness of God and it does not lead us to joy furthermore he says to be humble and to remove all filthiness and wickedness if we do that those acts will show that we are thinking of others placing them above us, ourselves. A lifestyle characterized by thinking of others first demonstrates that the word has been implanted in that individual soul. But if we get those, those words jumbled up, J-O-Y, Jesus, others, and yourself, then our joy gets jumbled up as well. A third exhortation is God's, uh, James says, to do God's word, to do God's word. Do not merely be hearers of the word, says James, so, dece so deceiving yourselves. Do what it says. Those who listen to the word but do not do what it says, they're like people who look in the mirror at their reflection. And after looking at themselves, they go away and immediately forget what they look like. Because those who look intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they heard, but doing it. They will be blessed in what they do. Joy, joy, joy down in my heart. It behooves us, James says, to do God's word, to put God's word into action. It behooves us. It brings us closer to joy. The clearest expression of our need to put it into practice, to put that 
with that which we know and the practice is found in this sec session of a section of James. He pleads with us to be doers of the word and not hearers only. The warning is strong to those who do not do the word. He says they are deluding themselves. These words call us to personal examination. Each of us to reflect upon our own lives to see if we are able to do what we know. A wise colleague of mine once told me that, that spiritual maturity is not based on what you know, but based on what you do with what you know. I think James would agree with that. Application of God's word is a real test for our walk with God. One of James's famous lines is to put faith into action. It's part of his theme. James argues that we, we deceive ourselves when we do not put the Bible to action, the, the word into, uh, into action. We don't apply what we've learned to life. In fact, these are some of the strongest words in the scriptures about uh, self-deception, warning us about self-deception. It's not enough for us to hear and read the Bible if we don't put it into practice. We don't put into practice what we've heard from the word. Those who do not do that are like a foolish man who built his house upon the sand. Now, Jesus in his parables a lot of times are bringing up things they know about. This is not just a, a hypothetical. You see, in the area that Jesus walked in, it's, it's kind of an arid climate. It doesn't get a lot of rain until the rainy season. But 11 months out of the year, you can build a house on the sand and not have any problem. But people know this. They knew that some people would do that. And then when the rains come and the floods raise up, their house will be washed away because they built their house in a dry riverbed. They just didn't know any better. I, when, I, when I started, the first place I went to was a little, little town called Parnassus. And uh, back a little bit off of the beaten track, and I think it was Mount Solon era, they, area, they had this, this thing called the Dry River. It was called the Dry River. Now, no one had known it anything but uh, just rocks, you know, just rocks. They didn't know, they had never heard of it being a wet river. And there's even a bridge over this thing called Dry River, even a bridge over it. But yet, they got so used to it being a dry river, they decided it was a good place to put their garbage. You know, their uh, you know old refrigerators or whatever, larger items, obviously. And then, one day the rains came. We had a, some, a piece of a, a hurricane come through, and uh, it went, it actually went on the other side of uh, of the valley, it was Chando Valley, uh, on the West Virginia side. But, and we got enough rain. We got a lot of soaking rain, but the problem is when you're in the valley, the water from this mountain range comes down and the water from this mountain groupings come down and the dry river became not dry. And, uh, and anybody who had put these dams up <laughs> in the dry river uh, it, it flooded and their houses washed away not, not a nice thing but um, very illustrative as illustrations James uses uh, our ability or inability to bridle our tongue 
and our willingness or unwillingness to, to minister to those really in need. And he mentions widows and, and orphans. All of us need to be reminded of the necessity of putting into practice that which we know, that which we have heard from the word. And it doesn't just benefit other people. Doing the word leads us on our quest to find joy in our lives. It's kind of a win-win situation. All of us need encouragement and help from time to time to be strong enough to keep practicing what we know is right, to put the, the word into action that the joy of the Lord can be our strength. May God give us the strength to help and encourage one another to put into practice what we have heard from the scriptures and to be doers of the word and build our lives upon God's solid rock. For everyone who hears these words of mine and put them into practice are like the wise men who builds his house upon the rock. If we are doers and not just hearers of the word, then we will be able to understand more and withstand even more anything that might come our way. Withstand it through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen.